Ranan, um, let's talk about complementary feeding. An infant is born, is breastfed. When is it time to start up complementary feeding? What is the recommendation of the scientific society? Well, the recommendations, as you know, are both scientific and political. Uh, the recommendation is exclusive breastfeeding for uh, a period of six months. Uh, although we know that in uh, some developed countries, um, even four months exclusive breastfeeding might be uh, also okay. It's true also that during the last year, the new Cochrane uh, review uh, shows some benefits of exclusive of six months versus four months. Uh, but um, it could be that starting complementary feeding at four months would be okay, as long as you introduce solids that will not reduce the amount uh, of uh, breastfeeding. Um, and this depends also on the maturity of the child, his ability uh, to get the food, both from a cognitive perspective and also from his motor skills. This is the recommendation. What is the reality in the world? You know, uh, uh, how many mothers are really exclusively breastfeeding until six months? Do we know that? Well, the reality um, is uh, much less than what the recommendations are. Uh, I would uh, put it in two parts. The first is the mother wishes. Um, when uh, a, ch a study that was just published this year uh, looked at women, what their expectations are. Didn't say whether it should be four months or six months or whatever. They asked the mothers, how much time do you want to breastfeed, exclusively breastfeed your child? And they gave different numbers, around three months or whatnot. The thing is, that only 30% of the mothers have lived up even to the time that they were thinking they will breastfeed. Um, so this re these are recommendations, this is reality. Let's talk about local cultural habits, you know. We, uh, we always think we have one global standard in the, in the world to recommend vegetables, to recommend fruits, to recommend cereals. But there are different cultural habits in a population. Uh, certain populations are using uh, non-milk liquids from the f age of two, three weeks onwards because it has been a tradition. Is there a disadvantage if this is done? There is a disadvantage if complementary feeding is started before the age of four months. Mm -hmm. It is disadvantage from an allergy perspective. There are studies showing that if you expose children uh, to complementary feeding before the age of three months, you increase the risk of allergy. Uh, for gluten, for example, you increase the risk of diabetes in high risk uh, uh, population. Uh, sometimes it's also a problem of nutrition. We have, uh, in my country for example, people are using juices of rice. Uh, it's rice, it's uh, uh, painted with white, so they call it uh, rice milk, but it has no calcium, it has no additives. That in, in the tradition of people, they're using this rice milk as a milk, so it's not even cow's milk. Uh, so there are also nutrition disadvantages of having complementary feedings before the age uh, of three months, not only allergy. So there is a risk if you start up too early. On the other hand, you know, when the first tooth is erupting, uh, Mother Nature is telling us it's time to eat something else. And this happens in uh, some children at age five months, another uh, sorry, uh, some infants at the age of five months and others seven months. Um, is there a risk if you introduce solids too late? Let's say if you exclusively breastfeed until nine or twelve months, is there any risk? Well, some of the risks are evidence-based, some of them uh, are more uh, a belief uh, and are not proven. The ones that are not scientifically proven, uh, but clinically we think are solid, uh, are the fact that children should go to a stage where they learn to accept other foods 
and it would be inappropriate just to continue uh, to suck milk and not start getting foods. Whether this will have an effect on later acceptance of food is a question, although there are studies showing that when you're exposed at the age of six to seven months to vegetables, you will accept vegetables better when you're seven years, and if you do it while breastfeeding, it also has an advantage. So this is one thing that we would like to see. The other is from the nutritional aspect, because if you continue to only be exclusively breastfed, you will not have enough nutrients, not calories, not trace elements, not vitamins, so you need this adaptation to uh, solids in order to get your nutrition values. And lastly, also delayed introduction of allergenic foods is related to more allergy. So both early and late are a problem. Are there any risks in terms of food safety? You know, uh, uh, breast milk is something which is very, very safe. Yeah? Uh, but then the baby is exposed to different types of foods. And uh, I assume that you are not only giving one type of food, you introduce one and then the next. Is there any risk uh, which the mother can avoid? There are risks that the mother can avoid. I think it comes in few levels. The first level is the food it, that you choose. For example, if you introduce fish to your children, it should be fish that are devoid of mercury. So the, f the food items that you choose should be safe. Uh, for example, um, if you take an apple that was uh, cleaned with all kinds of pesticides uh, and it is not cleaned well, uh, you can have so levels you, that are You peel toxic. the apple or what? You peel it. Uh, you peel it. So, well, but, so that's, now I'm coming to the second level. Yeah. You have to peel the apple. You have to cut very uh, thin because there is a risk of choking in children. Right. Uh, you need to take off the skin of the, of the meat because of its fat content. You need to have safety rules at home that you don't take meat outside of the refrigerator, leave it for I don't know how much time. Um, you bring it back to the refrigerator after you cooked it, but it was too long, then you have bacteria inside, so there are safety issues. Uh, from that perspective too, and all these things should be exercised at home. Uh, there are certain populations in the world which are starting up with cereals. Is there anything you would like to comment? If the cereals are fortified, are they adequate? Um, this is a very good question, and I think when we see the studies that we don't see any difference with supplementation uh, versus those uh, without. You ask yourself whether this is uh, really necessary or replaces the need for vegetables and the variety of food. Uh, but I don't see a danger in that, and at least in one uh, aspect, uh, countries that have fortified cereals with iron, and those countries there is high cereal consumption, they were able uh, to fight the iron deficiency by supplementing uh, iron. So this comes to another aspect. I think that in each country, in each uh, continent or whatever, each cultural pocket, I would call it, if you fortify the foods with those elements that are deficient in the diet, this is one way of combating it. Um, I'll give you an example from our country. Uh, we are using water, the salted water. So you have low magnesium. Uh, I mean, it, it's a big problem of losing everything that is in water. Now, you need to fortify it. You need to find the food items that, that if you uh, supplement those, the magnesium in and, and other things like the folic acid that we want to do, then uh, it, it is beneficial only if it is done um, on food items that on one hand you will not get toxic levels in uh, nutrients that have toxic uh, thresholds and on the other hand will make a difference because in my country for example cereal consumption is not that high so if you decide that that's where you go you may not target your population. Is there any risk of overdosing uh, any micronutrients? For example if you go to the supermarket you buy 
fortified cereals, you buy fortified uh, baby milk, you know, after breastfeeding. Is there any danger to over overdose or? Usually not, although there are some instances, for example, pe people have put, for example, for young children, uh, a higher threshold for vitamin D of 1,000 units. So you don't want to go above it. Uh, there are questions whether if you have too high folic acid levels, this could have, uh, not for children, but for older people, could have detrimental effects. Um, it, it plays a different role in versus stages of cancer. So there is the hypothetical risk also unmasking, but that's a different question of... Uh, what do you uh, recommend if, if, you know, if a mother tells you, I give fortified cereals, I give fortified baby milk, would you uh, recommend in addition to uh, vitamin supplements? Uh, I usually try to work with families on having a variety of food, and in that case, no supplementation is needed. So the natural way is better? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.